Great to have you along for the ride. Thanks a lot for stopping by. And uh, really glad to have Ken Cuccinelli on. He is the former, you got a couple of former uh, um, uh, titles there, Ken. One, you were the, the Attorney General of Virginia. Yes, I was. And Best then, job I ever had. Uh, and we'll get into that a little bit because I think Attorneys General right now, those offices are under attack by people like Soros who want to fill them with people who just don't believe in American values. So if we have time, we'll get into that. But also the former um, acting deputy director or secretary of DHS, which of course is front and center right now in our nation. How are you? Good to see you. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I've gone from four phones to one, having left <laughs> government service and uh I've got reintroduced to my family. It's uh, it's all those are all pluses. Did they recognize you, Ken? They do. Yes, <laughs> they do. Thankfully, from television, right? Exactly. I I saw this guy looks like Daddy was on TV today. So obviously, the border has been front and center in this country since 1986, when Ronald Reagan decided, "I'll believe the Democrats and I'll give three and a half million illegals, you know, residency and a path to citizenship, and they promise we'll never have this problem again." On your best estimate. Ken, do you have any idea how many illegals are in this country? I have no clue. Is it 10 million? Is it 20 well, million? Do we know? Like the MIT, Harvards of the world talk about around 25 million. Can you imagine 25 million people after these hollow promises from Democrats in the Congress with Ronald Reagan? Now that Reagan was a dumb guy, I think he believed them. Maybe he was a bit naive, but, but he here was, we are. He was optimistic and really, he got along with the people on the other side of the aisle yeah. in a way that is just sort of historically unknown to us today. Well, he I and Tip O'Neill liked each other, right? They did. Yeah, they did. And we don't it's, have a whole lot of that with Pelosi. And when Trump was in office, she's tearing up <laughs> you know, no. speeches behind him and all that stuff and pointing at him <laughs> to get a photo op. So uh, talk to me about what was happening before January 20th of this year to shore up the border, the deals we had with Mexico, the Northern Triangle. If you want asylum, stay where you are and then uh, request asylum. We know that, what, 70 to 90 percent of those seeking asylum don't don't have any valid claim. Right. So what happened on January 20th? How badly or how big a shift was it? Oh, I mean, it went from enforcing the law to not enforcing the law. And, and actually, that may understate it. That's January 20th. So that would be accurate for January 20th. Right. We, we literally, as a country, we stopped enforcing our immigration laws. And then after January 20th, they actually moved full bore into facilitating illegal immigration. They're spending money. ICE is the agency that deports people back to their home country. Well, instead of spending taxpayer dollars to deport illegal aliens back to their home countries. They're spending taxpayer dollars for ICE to transport illegal aliens farther into our country via buses and planes. And you've seen the pictures of people on planes holding signs, you know, tell me where to go. I don't speak English. Wow. And of course, I don't have an ID either. We'll get into that separately. But um, they're spending our money to do that. And if you're an illegal alien and you just want to get to America because you think work opportunities are better there and you don't care about obeying the law, you know, you've got the perfect administration right now. Hell, they're showing up, Joe, on the border with Joe Biden T-shirts on like it's a political rally. And then and then Jen Psaki looks at the reporters and says, Trump caused this. This isn't us. Yeah, yeah. It, it's 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 like bizarro he, world. I, down to Mexico and sold them all T-shirts on their way up. Yeah, <laughs> that's what happened. It's Ken. Uh, it's Ken Cuccinelli, of course, the former acting deputy of the of the DHS, also former Attorney General of the Great State of Virginia. He's got an op-ed out called "The Border Surge Is the Prelude to a Voter Registration Boost for the Left." And I want to get into that in earnest in a second. On top of the money uh, that we're spending to send people around the country, just have a nice day. Ten percent of them have COVID, according to to Ted Cruz. Yeah, w welcome to America. Um, we're also spending 80 plus million dollars to house them in nice hotels. I mean, these are nice hotels that I've stayed in recently. So no, that's gone up to like half a billion. So half a billion dollars to house people. And, and as you say, contract is, is, uh, tightly tied to the administration and it was a no bid contract. How about that? Well, I so, mean, I, I, I talked to Rudy okay. Giuliani about this, about this administration, about this family. He thinks it's a RICO case in the making. Uh, and and I, I agree. There's a whole lot of stuff going on here the mob couldn't get away with in the 1970s yeah. and 1980s. But they keep on doing it because it's just good old Joe and he's not Trump. So, Ken, let me ask you this, a very general question, but maybe you've got a good answer for me. How is it that we've changed the narrative so much in this country that people, just because of mean tweets or just because of how he wears his hair, were able to hate Trump and forget the great policies he put in place and love Biden no matter how close he is to dementia or how bad his, his son is or his, his family crime ring is? How is it that we've done that? And, and I'll end it with this. 
You keep saying illegal alien. That's the proper term. Every time you say it, there's a millennial out there who, who cringes and who gets a stomach ache because they've been indoctrinated to believe that you're now somehow racist because you use the proper term for somebody who's alien to this country. So tell me, I mean, is it just that we've convinced people through the narrative that what's right is wrong and what's wrong is right? I think a lot of it is. I mean, you know, the, the left has been working to take over the educational system for a long time and, you know, critical race theory and so forth. They're still on the march there. Uh, we're fighting back. But. But that is the result of all of this, plus the volume of the narrative in one direction. I mean, you just look at something as simple as a viral treatment uh, that's been around for 20 years with respect to SARS, 16 years. By in, that's in NIH-funded research, and Facebook bans it. Right. Uh, you know, because it doesn't match the narrative. And this is a year after it's been proven effective. Right. Um, they're still doing it. So the narrative and uh, the uh, the powers that be that control that narrative are really meaningful. It's it's real. Facebook and Google, these entities have real power and they're outside government. Um, and we've seen the accumulation of these assets in a very small number of hands uh, that are radical leftists or at least radical politically correctist, yeah. which serves the leftist radical agenda. And they are out to get us. Just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get you. They are out to get us. And they actively undertake that. And so you get this sort of swamped narrative from one side and not the other. And it has real-world consequences. And they're succeeding. Unfortunately, they're very good at it. It is Ken Cuccinelli, former attorney general of the great state of Virginia, also the former acting deputy of the DHS, or acting uh, secretary, deputy secretary, you were the guy down there um, uh, during the Trump administration, uh, at least the second guy, right? You were like the guy who was like the vice president, if we had to put it in those terms, right? Well, except I was the chief operating officer, so okay. I was doing all the day-to-day work of actually trying to make sure the border was secure. And, and you know, you asked about all the programs with Mexico. We had programs with Mexico, with Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador. Thanks to President Trump being tough. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. He was tough with these countries in the negotiation, and some of it was very public. And Republicans were on his case about, hey, you know, maybe you're being too tough. Uh, But the result was the best cooperation we've ever had. And now we've seen the presidents of Mexico, Guatemala, and El Salvador all in one way or another publicly say that this current administration has caused this border crisis in the United States. Um, despite their efforts to try to disclaim it and to try to blame it on the Trump administration. But when they came into office, we were returning people to their home countries. Right. We, we're now at the lowest levels of doing that that anybody can ever remember. Um, we have a Border Patrol agents being ordered to ignore criminal aliens. And by criminal aliens, we mean people who we already know have committed other crimes whether it's rape or murder or child molestation or whatever it is, this administration is ordering the Border Patrol to ignore that and just facilitate their entry into the country in those Obama cages that they now call welcome centers. Yeah, oh, exactly and, right. Yeah, and, it, it, and, and we mentioned that this is a prelude to voter registration. In the bill they want to pass, H.R. 1 or S. 1, they automatically, they order all states to put all individuals, meaning adults, and they don't use the word citizens, quite intentionally, into the voter registration rolls automatically. And they remove the penalties for those people voting who are put on the voter rolls in that fashion. You're literally talking about the intentional registration of millions of illegal aliens for the purpose of voting in elections because the Democrats believe that illegal aliens voting helps them. And I suspect that may be true because why not vote for the side that's willing to ignore the law and let you do whatever you want versus the other side that wants to enforce the law, which actually means you have to play by the rules. Right. <gasps> you know, like Imagine so many that. others who have come here, including, by the way, Hispanic Americans who are moving more and more into the Republican column. And the people who've come here legally and played by the rules are some of the people who are most angry watching others who come here cheating 
Well, and, otherwise, why would we see the Rio Grande Valley go so much for Trump as they did? Why would we see South Florida and the Cuban population there go for Trump as they did? These people are waking up. And by the way, Hispanics, generally speaking, are very conservative people, family-oriented yeah. people, people who have traditional American values. Just it's entrepreneurial, yes. A lot, a lot of traits that in the Republican Party, we'd like to think that we, uh, you know, promote. It's Ken Cuccinelli, the former attorney general of the um, uh, great state of Virginia, also the former acting deputy secretary of the DHS under President Trump. President Trump and Vice President Pence went off into the border. Trump was there, uh, it seemed like, yeah, all the time. All the time. I couldn't even tell you how many times. Plus, yeah. he was also in contact with all the governors of the states that are on the border all yes. the time. I've ta- I talked to, by the way, Democrats and Republicans. Exactly That's right. Enough. And Gavin Newsom even said, hey, you know, he's doing a good job on some of this stuff. Um, yes. So Greg Abbott, the, 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 the governor here at great state of Texas, where I am, was on last week. I talked to Dan Patrick, to the lieutenant governor. They haven't heard anything from Biden yet. Not from Harris, not from Saki, not from Jill Biden, not from anybody. They're not hearing from anybody to work in conjunction to quell the tide. And, and that's just a world of difference. Should yeah. Kamala Harris get on Air Force Two and just go to the border and at least show some face? Should Biden go and show some face? Does that make a difference to the the morale of those who are working the border? Well, it would be the first inkling that they're actually serious about um, entertaining the notion there is a crisis on the border. And, you know, Joe, we say the numbers are the highest in 20 years, but it's important to remember that when you go back it's really like 15 or 16 years ago to when we saw numbers like this at the border, they were overwhelmingly adult Mexican males. And that's important difference because the logistics of returning Mexican nationals to Mexico is nothing compared to what it takes to return children and families, which is a huge portion of what we're seeing now, back to Central America. Right. And then to the other 150, 160 countries all over the world that we encounter on our southern border. Can states do anything, Ken? You're a former oh, attorney general. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yes, they can. What can they and, do? Uh, there's more and more talk about it. You see, Texas is getting more aggressive, but under Article 1, Section 10, Clause 3 of the U.S. Constitution, an invaded state can use exercise war powers. They can return people directly across the border, no questions asked, no typical civilian due process required. Is that not uh, superseded by the idea that immigration and naturalization is up to the central government? That That's what sort of holds it no, back. When, when, you know, when SB yeah. 1070 was going to happen in Arizona, Jan Brewer, the then governor, was just yeah. echoing exactly what the federal law was, and Obama actually argued in court, no, that's up to us, and the, the courts agreed with them, and then they did nothing. So they can go around that? Nothing. So, you know, if a state determines it's being invaded, the the founding fathers left sovereign power in the states themselves to contend with that. This is not immigration policy. At these kinds of numbers, this is an invasion, and that's how it ought to be treated. Yeah, Greg Abbott last week told me that he's going to start arresting people for trespassing, which I think is ingenious. I think that's brilliant. Um, And then, you know, locking them up. It could be six months. It could be a year. You want to come here. We're going to lock you up for trespassing and put you in. Look, that's breaking Texas law. I don't care where you came from. If you're trespassing, you're trespassing. You like that idea? I do like that idea. I think it's it's a good next step. I think it's important. The detention piece is important. You can't just give them a ticket and let them go. Um, and, um, but, uh, you know, there's, as you asked, is there more states can do? There's another step out there and the constitution provides it. And I think you're going to be hearing more and more about that in the days and weeks to come from Congressman Jody Arrington in Lubbock area. I think you're going to be hearing more and more from state Senator Perry in Texas in that area. Um, and, and look, Democrats on the border are, are among the loudest people screaming that this administration is failing, whether it's Congressman Henry Cuellar in the Laredo area, whether it's Democrat sheriffs on that border. These are real elected Democrats who recognize the real world consequences of uh, an administration that wants to facilitate an invasion rather than enforce our immigration laws. It's Ken Cuccinelli. Check out his op-ed, The Border Surge is a Prelude to a Voter Registration Boost for the Left. Ken, thanks a million for coming on. It's at Ken Cuccinelli. Go and follow him right now on Twitter. And we hope to have you on again very soon. Can we do that? Yes, Joe, absolutely. My pleasure. Good to be with you. Appreciate you. Good to have you here. We're back after this. Stay right here.